Greetings. Today we're going to discuss the gas laws. You already know quite a bit about gases and the variables involved, but now we're going to focus our attention on the laws that govern gases and that explain the gas behavior. So this is to quote Mike Goffin, the one that makes up all of our songs. Uh, the gas laws help predict how gases will act where the, when they're heated or cooled or squished in a can. The gas laws are good to know. Yeah, okay, so they help predict how gases will act. And that's a great thing. All right, then we'll sing in class. Don't you worry, I've got songs for you. All right, so now let's talk about Boyle's Law. Specifically, it is the relationship between volume and pressure. And the, re the mathematical relationship is V1, P1 equals V2, P2, where V1 is the initial volume, V2 is the final volume, P1 the initial pressure, and P2 is the final pressure. So these two relationships are actually, the way they are set up, they are, they are inversely proportional. Okay, so this shows the inverse proportionality. First of all, let me show you this, this uh, graph um, from Boyle's experiment, pressure, pressure versus volume. As pressure increases here, the volume decreases. This is how it's, it's set up. All right? Now, take a look at this. This is, um, these are two cylinders, and they're showing how, what happens to the motion of the molecules or the particles of the gas when you increase the pressure. So here we have the movement of the molecules, da 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 da, okay? And then we come over here, and they're pressed together, they're much closer together, so they're going to be moving a lot faster because they are bumping against each other, they're bumping against the walls of the container, and all of this is happening pretty quickly. So you agree that on this side, over here, we have greater pressure than we have over here. But the truth is that when you take the volume, and you ha if you take the volume and you have the volume, the pressure in doubles. So it increases by twice that number. So the pressure doubles when the volume is halved. So that's the relationship, and that always holds true. And that's something you need to remember. All right, so now we're going to solve a problem, a Boyle's Law problem. And first thing I want to do is to make sure that I write my variables, and I write my formula. So this says that a 27.2 milliliter sample of gas at 25 degrees and 1 atm is compressed to 3 milliliters without a change in temperature. So since the temperature doesn't change, this is a true Boyle's Law problem. So we don't have to worry about the temperature at all, because that does not change. And that's true for all Boyle's Law problems. So uh, without a temperature change, to what pressure would it have to be compressed to? So we, what we're looking for is P2. So V1, P1 equals V2, P2. So we are looking for the pressure 2. To what pressure would it have to be compressed to? So I'm looking for P2. So in order to solve for P2, I have to divide by V2, and I have to divide here by V2. So therefore, these V2s go away, and V1 times P1 divided by V2 equals P2. So all I have to do is plug in my numbers. But even before we do that, we should write the variables first. So I'm going to write the variables over here. V1 equals 27.2 milliliters. And I have uh, P1 is equal to 1.00 atms. And finally, P2 is going to be equal to 3.00 milliliters. Now, once I have my variables written, I can go ahead and plug in my numbers into my formula and uh, get a, the correct answer. V1, 27.2 milliliters, times P1, which is 1.00 atms, divided by V2, which is 
Oh, this is B2. Oops. B2. Don't forget that. Sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, B2 is 3.00 milliliters. Glad you caught that. Okay. And, of course, 27.2 times 1 divided by 3.00 milliliters cancel out. I'm looking for ATMs. I'm looking for uh, P2. And my answer is 9.1. ATMs. And I'm boxing my answer, and I'm done. Okay, now, I'm going to leave you with a problem. I'm going to leave you with this problem, and I want you to pause and solve the problem, and then come back and check out the answer. There's your answer. How did you do? All right. Tomorrow, we're going to, I'm going to show you some experiments with volume and pressure. And if you guys bring in some marshmallows, we'll be good. And we'll be able to show you some neat tricks with a vacuum pump. See you tomorrow.